Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to this new video. This time we're going to be talking about hashtag and hashtag is one of the most advanced password recovery slash password testing slash password cracking tools that you can find out on the market. It is open source, which means that it's free. It is constantly being maintained and updated. As you can see here on the official site, the latest version is 6.26 and that was updated or released on 2022. And because it's command line and is a very matured product, it offers the ability to customize the syntax and the functions that you would like to perform in a very detailed manner. So it is very flexible. There are other commercial tools that you can use, but in this case, we're gonna be going over hashtag and we're gonna create a series of videos. Um, anticipating that it's gonna be about five. Today, we're gonna be talking about the most basic functions and how to uh, test or crack simple passwords that you have obtained in this case from a Windows 10 computer that we have obtained the hashes. Uh, something to keep in mind and let me show you here before <clears throat> we, mo we move forward is that this um, tool is going to be able to support a large number of algorithms uh, when that encrypts the hashes. <clears throat> so as you could see, it's, it does MD5, SHA1, SHA2, you know, SHA256, so on and so forth. Uh, you're gonna be able to perform different type of attacks with Hashcat. And if we scroll down, you're gonna be able to see that you're gonna be able to do dictionary attacks, brute force attack, hybrid attacks, uh, straight attacks, and you're going to be able to use rules, uh, which is pretty amazing because hashtag has done a lot of the heavy lifting when it comes to the cracking by creating rules that you can implement and apply for the testings that you are doing. And also another cool feature is that it is supported by many operating systems, including Windows, Linux, and Mac. In this case, I am running on a Ubuntu 22.04 <clears throat> desktop, uh, but I'm sure that you can run this from Kali, Parrot, or any other operating system. If you don't have it installed, it's a pretty simple setup. Just pretty much do sudo app, sudo uh, app get install uh, hashcat and the installation is super quick and simple it's gonna do it for you in maybe one or two minutes and something to keep in mind is that when the system performs the installation uh, it is gonna install that in the default folder and it's gonna install the rules uh, or the rules are gonna be uh, installed in the rules folder and we're gonna be talking about the rules later in another video, but that's something to keep in mind because we're gonna be using some of them to make our job easier. So let me uh, just show you something real quick. So what we have here, this is not exactly the setup that we have, but pretty much we have a uh, Windows um, computer that we, obtain the hashes from, right? And this is the, uh, let me come right here. This computer A is a Windows computer. And there are many different ways that hashes can be obtained on a Windows machine. We're not gonna go over them right now. And then I have this computer where I have Hashcat. And this is the, um, computer that is going to be performing the decryption process. Ideally, you would like to have a beefed up computer 
to do this type of ta or to perform this type of tasks. The reason for that is because it is very hardware intensive. So if you, in this case, were doing this for testing purposes in a test environment, and I have modified or created and modified my, my um, password file that we're gonna be using. But if you're performing this in the wild, you would really like to have a computer or a device that has the proper hardware requirements to perform uh, complicated mathematical uh, operations or searches, right? Even though, you know, we're going to be using a uh, password file, it's going to make the job easier. Uh, but still, <clears throat> it's going to be hardware intensive. So uh, you, you would like to have a system that is going to be uh, powerful enough to do this if you're doing this in the wild. Again, I'm doing this in a test environment. So uh, the other thing that I want to mention, I'm not going to go over uh, how we obtain the hashes. That's for another video. But I already have the hashes. So <clears throat> let's... Um, Let's just come over here. And one of the things you need to do is you need a couple of things when cracking passwords with, <clears throat> with Hashcat. And one of them, you need to know what type of hash that is. Again, in this case, um, let me uh, show you something. In this case, I have copied the hashes for three different users, admin user one and user two. And if I do cat user one hash, you're gonna see that this is the hash right here. Now, I know where the hash came from because I took it. This is from a local user account on a Windows 10 computer. And I know that Windows uses NTLM hashes. And that's what I'm doing here. The reason why I'm mentioning that is because when you use Hashcat, you need to specify the mode that you would like to use for the hashes. So let me uh, come here and I'm gonna do Hashcat minus H for help. And this is the help manual that you get it's pretty intensive, I must confess. But this is what I wanted to show you. You need to use minus M at least to specify the hash type that you're gonna be using. And if you come down here, you're gonna see all the all the old modes that you can use, right? So if you know that you wanna crack an MD5, you will use zero. If you know that you want to crack a SHA-256, you would use 1400. Or if you want to do um, uh, any other type of uh, uh, hashes, uh, you'll find that in here. So you, you get my point. Because if you don't select the proper mode, the system most likely is not going to be able to um, to crack the password because it's not gonna find it. It's not gonna understand your syntax or what you're doing. So what we need to do is this. The first thing you need to do is obviously specify the command and then the mode that you would like to use. And again, because I know that these hashes that I have are MTLM hashes, I'm gonna use M and I'm gonna use 1000, which is the MTL, the NTLM mode. So if we come down here, you will see it here. Where is it? 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 So let me, uh, hold on a second. Let me do So here it is, so I, it's somewhere in there. I just didn't <coughs> have the patience to go through that. So it is um, 1000 is the mode. So let me go back to M. Let me 
clear this and then what you need to do you need to specify the hash file that you want to use that you want to crack in this case I have it under user one dash hash right so you need to specify so this is the mode that you would like to use which which 1000 represents NTLM and this represents the file that contains the hash now if you have the file saved in another location make sure you specify the path to that location but I have it in this current directory so I don't have to specify anything other than the file name and then you need to specify the password file that you would like to use so let me open a new tab here and come over in this case you can create your own password file or you can download RockU which is one of the most popular password files and you can get to it uh, let me come cd space user share word list and then in here you're gonna see that I have Rocky the original and then I have a backup of it and there are different type of, of, of these files you have the shore the lawn and so on and so forth uh, this one has about I believe it's over 100 thousand or two hundred thousand possible passwords and there it is obviously we're not gonna go through all of them but just to give you an idea and just to remind you that this is gonna be as effective as the password file that you are using because what the system is gonna do is gonna get let me come back here um, what the system is going to do is going to get this hashed uh, password and it's going to compare the hash with these entries in clear text and one of these right if you hash all of these words one of them is going to supposed to represent one of these I'm not going to say that one of them will because you need to have that information right in the system if you don't have it you don't have it it's, it's not gonna crack it there's no magic wand in here so once we have here we're gonna point to that um, password file so we're gonna do user share word list rocky.txt and then the system is gonna do its magic and then guess what it says session hashcat and the status has been cracked and this is the password the clear text password that is associated to this hashed uh, password right as you can see this is the hash password this is the clear text password which is what you know what I was telling you right here uh, the system is going to be comparing one line at a time finding what uh, if these um, hash password represents the hash of this clear text password um, obviously this took a couple of seconds because I added this entry all the way at the top it's not you know there are like about whatever it is 200,000 passwords in that list I just put it right at the top so again this is a lab environment and it's gonna be super simple and then you can also do the same thing with I have user one then I have user two right so let me do user two and it's gonna be the same thing uh, it's gonna tell you blah 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 you know it was cracked and it's gonna show you the password as you could see these are fairly um, I'm not gonna say complicated but they're not easy passwords right especially very complicated yeah you know it's two common words together uppercase lowercase but um, it should take a long time to crack but since we're using a password list it doesn't take that long um, another thing you would like to keep in mind if I try to run this one more time 
uh, the system is going to tell you that that hash, that hash has been successfully cracked. And the system, uh, Hashcat, is going to save that information in the, uh, where is it, in the padlock file? Where, where is it again? If we come down here, blah, 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 blah. Or in the pad file, in the pad file file, right? So there is a file, if you do, that is hidden and is in, in this current directory that is going to keep all those passwords that you have cracked uh, for you to reference them in the future if you want. Um, and you can empty that file if you wish to. But if you do ls um, minus lah to show the hidden files, uh, that is going to be in the local share hashcat folder. So if you do cd that local, and then you do the same thing, right? And you do cd share, and then hashcat is going to be somewhere in here. Here it is, as you can see. We do cd uh, hashcat. And then you are going to find the hashcat path file. If I do a cat space hashcat podcast file, you're going to see that it is keeping that information saved for you. So the system is going to save time. Let's say that after a couple of months, you come over another engagement and you run that, uh, the system will tell you that that hash has been already cracked. So you don't have to go through the process one more time. And if you do, um, you can always clear this, you know, if you do sudo nano uh, hash cut, but you can always, uh, you know, delete the content of the file. And then you can run it again if that's what you would like to do. But uh, I'm not going to do that because I already cracked them. But anyway, so that's the very basic function of Hashcat, and it is very powerful. So I'm going to stop this video right here. All I ask you, if you liked this video and you found this information useful, why don't you consider subscribing to my channel and leaving a nice comment? Hey, listen, um, that is good karma, right? <laughs> so it comes around, goes around. And um, subscribe to the channel so you can get notified of new videos. If you have any questions, you could leave it in the comment section. I try my best to answer those questions. I don't always get to them, but I try my best. I can promise you that. Uh, have an amazing day, and I will talk to you on the next video.